All right, in this video, we're going to look at solubility. So I think a lot of us know that uh, if you have warmer water, it can generally hold more salts and things. More will be able to dissolve in it than in colder water. One of the reasons is the water molecules heat up, they spread out more, there's a little bit more room. So that's a general trend. And as you look at this graph, as temperature increases, most of these curves also go upward. So like for NaCl, actually that's one that's not very different, but at lower temperatures, you can only dissolve um, about 37 grams per 100 grams of water. And as the temperature rises, more salt can dissolve in the water. Um, generally, the ones that have a downward trend are gases, like NH3 is a gas. As it gets warmer, less can dissolve because the gas has so much energy, it just escapes. Um, there are other exceptions. The key thing about this graph is to realize that you can dissolve, if I have enough water, I can dissolve pretty much any amount of salt. If I have the Pacific Ocean, I can dissolve 50 grams of even the most insoluble salt. So the graph always says per 100 grams of water. So they're assuming you have a beaker with 100 grams of water, and at this temperature, how much could dissolve? So let's look at this first question. How many grams of KNO3 can dissolve in 200 grams of water at 60 degrees Celsius? So what I do is I find 60 degrees Celsius where it meets KNO3, and it looks like about 100 grams. So that means that about 100 grams of KNO3 are able to dissolve in 100 grams of water at this temperature. So it's a proportion. So if I have 100 grams of water, I can expect 100 grams of KNO3 to dissolve at 60 degrees. So how much can dissolve at 200 grams of water? It's a proportion. If 100 grams can dissolve in 100 grams of water, then in 200 grams of water, how much will dissolve? We can call this X. Now this is pretty easy to see. If 100 can dissolve in 100, 200 should be able to dissolve in 200. But you can cross multiply and divide, use whatever algebraic skill you want to use to solve this. But in this case, it's 200 grams of KNO3 can dissolve in this quantity of water. And there's a lot of other ways we can ask this question. So here's another question. How many grams of water are needed to dissolve 125 grams of KCl at 80 degrees Celsius? So again, start by finding 80 degrees and KCl. And if I do, it looks like it matches at about 50 grams. So that means we can expect 50 grams of KCl. Again, what it will dissolve in, we have to have some knowledge of how much water. According to the graph, it's 100 grams of water. So in 100 grams of water, you can hold 50 grams of KCl. I want to dissolve 125 grams of KCl. So how much water will I need? So again, I can set up a proportion. If 50 grams can dissolve in 100 grams of water, um, 125 will take how much water? And again, I can cross multiply and divide to do this. So 50x equals 125 times 100. So 125, 0, 0, and divide each side by 50. And I should get that this will be uh, 250 grams of water. And so again, this should make sense. If 100 can hold 50, 200 could hold 100, 250 can hold 125. So this is mainly proportions uh, in reading these graphs. Now here's one that's a little different. What is the minimum temperature required to dissolve 100 grams of KNO3 and 125 grams of water? So now we're looking for a temperature. The key is to use this graph at all. We know right now that 100 grams of KNO3 are dissolving in 125 grams of water, and that's great. But in order to use this graph, I can't have 125 grams of water. This graph is all based on 100 grams of water. So this, as it stands, is useless. I need to convert this into 100 grams of water. So yeah, it's great that that much can dissolve in 125, but how much can dissolve in 100? So again, I'll cross multiply and divide. So this would be 10,000 equals 125x. When I cross multiply, that is. Then I divide each side by 125, I should get x equals 80 grams. So I need the ability to dissolve 80 grams of KNO3 in 100 grams of water. What's the minimum temperature that occurs? So if I find KNO3, I go up to where it's 80, and it looks like the lowest temperature needed to make that happen is 50 degrees Celsius. So anything at 50 or above will be able to handle this, will be able to dissolve this. Now all of these on the graph are maximum solubilities. These are the limits. So if you ever have anything less than this dissolved, the, situ the, the solution is unsaturated. If you have exactly this much dissolved, it is saturated. And supersaturated is a separate issue, um, which we won't talk about here, but supersaturated is if you were able to get more to dissolve um, than meets this graph. And to do that, you have to kind of do a trick, which we'll, we won't get into here. Anyway, but that's how you do the mathematics of uh, solubility calculations. So until next time, my name is Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.